Guys, peace and solitude out at sea down here in Devon. The tide's all wrong, it should be going that way and somebody's forcing it to go this way. So I have no idea what's going on. However, I'm going to keep giving it a go for fishing for anything. What a setting. Water is very, very clear, but slightly early in the season or perhaps not. The breeze was supposed to be up here, northeast. It's now coming from there, from here, it's all over. So I don't think it's anything bad, it's high pressure. Let's get the rods together and see what we can catch. I have also got, I've got the tub of doom. This is the tub of doom. Ugh. So people might know, know that I like my shark fishing. I'm still trying shark fishing down here. Off South Devon for a rogue Paul Beagle shark or Oh, look at that, that's where I want the chum to go that way, it's not going to happen today with the tide. Or a thresher shark, you never know if you don't put a bait in the water. Graham, put a bait in the water. Two priorities, sandwiches, I've had a horrendous three hour drive. Life jacket, I'm slightly concerned. I have a blue one, I have a red one. They do have different juju qualities. I'm not sure the red is the one today, maybe I should have bought blue. I might need the old sweater on too because it's still pretty cool. Going to be using lighter rods today because it's sort of mid tides, if that makes sense. Having said that, I've just mentioned I'm going shark fishing. Well, I'm not going shark fishing. Look, I'm putting a shark line out. I've been coming here for a couple of years now. I, I do what I do, put a, a bag over of, of smelly stuff trying to attract a shark. I'm sure they swim through here. Do they stop? Nobody seems to know. As I understand it, there has never been one caught here, but just down there, Portland, out from there they get poor beagle sharks, and in the bay there off Chesil Bank, there have been thresher sharks seen in previous years. These are the luxury version that you can't buy in the tackle shop. It's the inner tube of a tyre cut up, and yes, it ties the rods together. I'm going to be giving a bit of a trial. I don't know whether they're going to stand up for it. Those of you who follow TA fishing, going to be using Frank 1, the broken top of a cart rod, that's it, with cork and winch, fill, winch fitting put on there, and a doorknob for a, well, it's a draw knob actually for a butt cap. We're going to see if he can hold up all his snaps. I have the more refined version here, which is Frankenrod 2. A broken cart rod, a broken cart butt. Sawn off, slotted together, padded up. You've seen it, it's on our films. I put cork on, small rings. This one's more tippy. We're going to see what we can do with this one. But listen, I'm not going for small fish with these. I'm dropping a big bait down and see if we can destroy them. Frank 1 <coughs> is a designer outfit and he's today wearing a short nylon boom, a lump of lead filled copper tube, some really crappy knots that are tied right but I haven't bothered snipping them off, a long trace, a single hook and a chunk, a chunk of mackerel not a fillet. I'm just going to lob it away from the boat a little bit and let it down relatively slowly because I'm on a short boom. The tide is kicking in this way quite hard. So I'm hoping this piece of lead filled pipe will be enough to get me to the bottom. I'm sure it will. They're not big tides, just sort of, I think mid range tides. Let it down to the bottom. It's on the bottom, I lift it, seen it in the other films. Bump. Bit of line off. 
bump, bump, in gear, loosen the drag a bit so I don't lose the rod, the clicker's on, but it don't work, so I keep an eye on old Frank, Frank 1 there, Frank 2 is appearing today in a um, deep sea blue finish of paint that I had left over in the garage. Is braid line a very long trace because that's just what I happen to have, a tailing cube of mackerel and the same terminal rig which I will thus cast out and hopefully does not tangle. I'll be fishing both Frank 1 and Frank 2 down here. So Frank 1 is a bit, a bit of a sort of basic, basic Frank and Rod that one. Bit rough really, bit rough. You want to meet them on a dark night. Frank 2 is more refined, it's a longer butt. It has got a gas knob, a gas door knob for a butt cap here, as opposed to Frank, which has, I'll show you, for the tackle tarts amongst you who love these things, a door knob here and a gas cooker hob number that you turn around twisty twisty there. I could probably put it on gas mark three. I'm going to lift it, drop it down. Frank 1 has seen a carp and dogfish. I think Frank 2 has only had dogfish. He's a bit wussy. He's going to bend double. I don't know if I'm going to get off of anything off the bottom. I'm going to fish a pair of up tide rods over here. Bear with me while I rig them up. Right, handy bait that you can get just out of the supermarket are these things. Whole shell on raw king prawns. I have caught on prawns before, but I'm going to try these purely because there might be smooth hound around. Could be bream, you don't know, black bream. And we'll give them a go. There's a bit of tie, so I'm gonna snip the tail off. I'm gonna thread most of this meat around the hook. Now, some people like to peel these. Let's put it in the sun like you can see better. Some people like to pre peel them, shuck them, you know, as it were. These have been in out the freezer a little bit. I'm gonna snap the head off there because a smooth hound doesn't have a huge big mouth. I'm just working it, taking the curve out of it, putting a sort of straight line in it, so I don't want it to spin in any tide, and then I'm gonna just bind it on there. So if there's crabs down there, and I'm sure there are, the crabs can chew away to their heart's content, and that should stay on there a little bit longer. It's more to hold the bait straight than for the casting. So I want it fairly straight. And I have forgotten my hand white ray, which I'm so delighted with in the car. We're going to try this. I oh, will probably lose gear because I'm casting across the tide. But hey ho, it's the way it is. Fixed ball, braid. It just spreads those. Spreads a smell, 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 smell of different baits. We'll see what happens. I catch or I don't catch or I lose gear. The same thing, I'm letting it go down quite slowly. I might be a little bit far east here, I don't know, but we'll give it an hour and then I'll always move. On the bottom. Just leave it like that for a second. I'll, I'll dump it in the shark holder. Just for now while I get the second one out. When you got uh, baits like this out the freezer, or out the freezer, out the cool box of the front, say, you just want to get the bait straight on and what you don't use, don't leave it in the sun because they're going to go very, very soft in, in the summer, obviously in the summer, in the warmth of the sunshine. So when you keep your bait fresh if you can, and as soon as I've bound this on and lumped it out there, I'm going to be putting that back in the cooler. I've got trout as well. I'm going to try these, this mackerel, but to be honest, I think the trout might be a bit better. Who knows? We're looking for any fish, any description. It's just sort of my first day out in this self-drive boat on my own. I have no trouble fishing alone, as you gather, because obviously I've done lots of films on it. And of course, I'm talking to myself. I just stop that line every so often, just like this, it's down, I raise it to straighten the trace out, it sits on the bottom, it's not a big tide, drag loose, the best place I think I used to put it there, that's where I used to put those up tiders, 
that's where they should go. Look, that's better. That's better. Just like that. Perfect, perfect. That way you can see they're both spaced out like a sort of pair of outriggers. I've got one light rod left. I always like to check I am on the bottom, which I know I am. Just raise it, drop it. I suppose, in retrospect, I should have put trout on one and mackerel on the other to ring the changes. Now, hey ho, it is what it is. I feel light rod time. I quite like this box, which was donated to me, but then this snapped on there, the catch for that. So when you lift this one up, it shoots everything, beads and swivels everywhere. But I've drilled some holes through it, made some little plastic arms like this, look, and you can twist, and that hopefully does the job. So I'm going to uh, rig up this rod, which is a fixed ball reel, as you can see. It's sort of light rod just for fishing on the bottom. I'll probably fish a pattern oster on that and just drop it straight down. I thought I saw a bite on this then. Smith, you're supposed to be on bite duty. Pretty sure I saw a tap on that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh no, oh no. It might just be a dogfish. Oh, dropped him. I think it's a small conger. Now, you could have had the bait off, but I'll just take a gamble and drop it straight back down again. So, there is a fish on mackerel. Let's get those small hooks down. I'm taking a bit of a belly strip off of uh, that mackerel. If you cut strips like this, generally the belly of the mackerel is best. Look, fresh mackerel, you can't beat it. But, um, I haven't actually got any... I haven't actually got any feathers or anything over the side yet. Might be... Might be a, oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Is that a bite or is that just dragging? Frank 2 is a very soft top. I say it's a bit of a wussy rod, but that smacks of a dogfish, maybe. Bear with me. I just missed that one on Frank 1, so I was striking perhaps a tad early. I'm not going to drop this bream rod, that's what that's going to be. I'm not going to drop that down yet. Let's just have a look, ow, just have a look at this. I think we've got that carpal tunnel syndrome business there, it's not pretty painful. What do you think, strike or not strike? I think I'm going to crank on this one guys. Oh, that felt like a big bang. No, I suppose like a doggy. Now, this is a broken rod, bear in mind, and look at the bend I'm getting in it. It's a dogfish I'm reckoning, which probably means I'm, I'm probably over, I'm not over rock, which I did think I was a little bit farther. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, whoa, hold on. A dogfish stopping you winding. Small strap conger. It is indeed, oh, oh Frank two strikes first. Uno Congero. Well, well, well. Who'd have thought it? Not a monster. A spinner. And very, very angry. Let's get a pair of pliers and get him unhooked. Well, that's a good start. He's hooked pretty well. So this, in case people didn't know, is one that I did by making my own fire. Okay. Heating it, bending it, and a piece of... I think it was cherry wood there. So let's see if we're going to get this chappy unhooked. Oh, it worked as sweet as a nut. And you know what I like about it? It's yellow. So if I drop it on the seabed, somebody else will find it. Not having loads of bait, I feel that one can be dropped down again. Success. We're going to check that bait there too. I think I'm going to put a bit of trout on. Success there for, oh, Frank to the softy. Nothing on those prongs. All right, I'm just gonna drop my little baits down literally over the stern here and see if there's any small fish. 
So you can see what I've got, let me show you, all for beginners, we've shown it all before. An expendable nut at one end and a nut at the other, that's right. That's what they say, a nut at one end and a nut at the other. Straight 12 pound line and three hooks which are about, they're in the pack, can't be bothered to get them out. They're about size two carp hook. I think they're barbless or semi barbless so I'm just going to drop that straight down there. Very, very clear the water. Wouldn't surprise me if there's the odd mackerel around, but the nut might not be enough to get me down to the bottom. We're just going to try it and, and see what happens. Nothing on the pools. Let's get that shark one out in a minute. That will slick off here and you'll see if there's a thresh or anything out there, a small pool beagle coming up that way. I'll probably get no more than about an hour or so out of it. I might as well get it in the water now. I put it frozen. I'll tell you what it is, the old tub of doom. That's what we call them. That's down, that's down now. Now this one, I can put on what they call bait runner. Oh dear, I hate this job. The tub of doom is basically four, four year old ex-trout chum. It could be carcasses, it could be guts, it could be heads, it could be skeletons. It's been there four years and has gone from here down to there. It's a sort of cadaver, which is where they experiment on different ageing processes of dead bodies. A, you know, a test, a sort of CSI on how long dead bodies decompose for. I can tell you this has decomposed for four years. Mostly oil and gunk in the bottom. I popped the top and it went... It was the most horrendous, unbelievable smell. Oh, oh, and still is. Oh dear, why did I not bring a hand wipe rag? It's going over the side. It will make a gargantuan slick, I can assure you. Oh my word. Blue sharks would give their right fins for this. This costs nothing except a little bit of effort. You've seen me do it many times before. Just drop it over. Leave it just hanging in the water there. Now I froze that. I put some extra bran with it, some ground up trout pellets, and then I just froze the lot because it, 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 if, I, if I don't freeze it, it will go really quickly in the tide. And it's also got double onion sacks, double bags. I just keep that nice and short there. That way if I get a fish, I've made mistakes before like having the bag too far back in the tide. And listen, I caught sharks in tide, don't, don't worry, I've caught them anchored before. Paul Wiggles, blues, black tips, lemons. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. That was a definite little knot there. I'll hold it dead still with the camera there. See if we get another bite. He's there, I can feel it tapping through the breath there. Look, 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 oh my God, oh my God, oh, it's a fish. There's that greedy fisherman, I look, I'm looking for the other rods to make sure I'm not getting attacked by two. It could be a dogfish, that's quite a big chunk of mackerel. And I also noted that last conga, I lost one on here, if you remember, just to give beginners an idea, I lost one on there, striking quite early. I left Frank to a bit longer. I did catch the conger, but he was just, just hooked in the jaws. So they might, might be feeling a bit, you know, a little bit pernickety. Nothing on the bottom. I think I need a, a, a bigger weight. But listen, I, although I haven't got a shark line out yet, you should be able to see, if I hold a camera dead still, the slick, either side. You see, you've got ripples, ripples, and then the slick's going back down here. Any shark swimming across that slick, We'll gradually narrow that down and come up to the back of the boat. I wonder, I wonder, Dale Smith, where's he gone? Where's that boy gone? He should know, he should tell me what to do. I think I'm just going to wind on this one. And miss him. Not to worry. You can see how long I took that bite to progress and I still missed the fish. Okay. God, that stuff's 
stinks. Oh my god. That is disgusting. Yeah, it's horrendous. The tub of doom. There are tubs of doom around the countryside, some of which have been left for six years and have an oil drum full. I won't mention any names because I'd like to protect the guilty, uh, innocent. Some of these people go shark fishing a lot and they will put anything in the water that's got smell to it to give them a chance. And that's on the bottom. That is on the bottom. And another little tap on Frank one here. It smacks of dogfish show. It's sort of a sharp, a sharp tug and then it stops. So I'm figuring the dogfish have located it. And very, very fine bites on that one. Now look, just very, very fine bites. This smacks of a dogfish on Frank one. It doesn't exactly level the scores up. I think he's come off. No, he's still there. What the hell was that? Something just came off that was a lot bigger or followed me up actually. I think it just came off. But let's have a look at it. Now that, just so you know, it's a soft bait, I know, but that's all crushed up. So I'm thinking conger or, let's watch those rods, conger or skate. I'm wondering if a piece of trout might be better as it obviously putting the bait nearer to me. That's better, that's better, that's better. There we go. This is rainbow trout guys, which is fed on high protein pellets. So, there's a good chance that uh, I've got high protein fingers now. I'm not washing my hands in that side of the bag. Let's drop that down and see if we can get a, a fish on it. I seem to be missing more than I'm catching at the moment. Uh, and with this, the skin is oh, unbelievably tough. Uh, I just hook it once, drop it over, that's, that's it. A little bit of a, a bite going on here with Frank one on that piece of uh, trout. Could be small fish pecking at it. Or not. Oh, shite. Oh, oh. Come on, Frank, put yourself together, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, Gotta get him off the bottom. God. I got this lightning conductor on my wrist as well. So if it blows up, at least it lit my wrist and not the rod. The copper lightning conductor. This ain't a small fish, boys. I'm gonna have to use the doorknob in the belly, the old drawer handle, because I can't get enough pressure on it. The thing is with small, tiny, buggy whip rods like this, with a big hook, I might not have pulled the hook in. Let's try and get him up. Come on, Frank, come on. Oh, this could be fishing a day for Frank. Oh, my word. It's a proper conger. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Frank, what have you done? That's a nice one. All the bubbles coming up where he's fighting. Oh, <laughs> every tackle dealer's turning in his, turning in his till. <laughs> And I've got my other line, oh sweetness and light. <laughs> but look at this, on a broken top of a carp rod. Look at this. <laughs> Come on boy, let's sort this out later. Am I gonna get it? Oh, gosh, hold, hold. Calm down, Frank, don't get too excited. We got the fish, nearly. I don't wanna break it. Oh, I've got the leader, that means nothing. This is a good conger. I'm going to put him in, but probably this side, because I want to keep that braid clear. Oh, that's a mess, but look at this one, peeps. A real big... <laughs> kick 
kicking in the face, slap, slapping in the wedding gear, conga and a mess of braid. I don't see it unspinning anytime soon. Bear with me while I sort this out. So, got my shark trace rigged up. I bought the other rod in. You always want to put your shark line straight down the middle. It's a frozen mackerel, put a split tail in it. And I cut the tail off so it doesn't spin. That one is all ready to go out. In between the other lines. my sliding float with the uh, selfish release clip which I, I'm sure we'll, I'm sure will be copied somewhere I've seen it in the magazine already but it works we all know that's going to get filmed I'm going to put it you can see it's back there so even though I'm holding it here it doesn't stink say five fathoms down it's probably two fathoms it's just a bonus anything that swims along I put the release clip here, in there, and that will pull free when I, if, not when, if I get a shark. My God. One day, one day, inshore, I will get one. Maybe, at least I'm trying. And still, I've still got time going back, as you can see. There's still a little bit of flow there, and I've still got particles here. But if I lean over, just coming out the bag. Oh, I've touched it. Why did I touch it? Oh, yeah. Look at it. Lovely jubbly. I was doing this many years ago, not that many years ago. Took Wayne out on his first shark trip, and I'm about five o'clock we were due to pack up, and at five to five, I started throwing all the carcasses over the side and one just exploded in the back of the boat. Neither of us will ever forget it about where that float is now. Just racing around, chopping up stuff, eating bits and pieces. That's about 500 plus. Of. Check drag. Probably nothing, probably nothing, but it's there and the beauty of shark fishing is you can still bottom fish. Well this guys I did bring the uptide one in and dropped it down here so I didn't want to get snagged and it is snagged so it tells me there is reef down there. A little trick you can sometimes do not so much with braid with with mono but I have actually got a, uh, a shock leader if, if you like on the bottom of that a rubbing leader. You can do this you can ping and fire off under pressure. Mostly only with fixed ball wheels, I always get a burst nest with a multiplier, but sometimes if it's on mono it will stretch and then twang back and it flicks a hook out. I've seen it happen many times, it was passed on to me by a skipper in Ireland and it has indeed worked. It ain't working this time because it's braid and when I pull back like this as you would do with mono and let it go nothing happens because there is no stretch in braid. But if you have mono on this reel I've got a good chance of getting it out. This is just a change bait as it were. Yeah they're definitely, look you're not going to be able to beach fish with these again because they would be too soft but like this threading them over the hook just dropping them down they were sort of just just tough enough to hang on the hook for a bream or pouting or whiting to home in on them. And you can use barbless hooks because they're dead. No 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 not the hooks obviously the worms. So there's a little tip salt newspaper freeze individually separate with sheets of newspaper in between and it seems it seems to work whether the fish enjoy it i don't know but you can see look 
Just three baits. I, I could have thrown that bait away, could not have not used it. It's cost me nothing to freeze it. And all you do is make sure you don't put your sandwiches <laughs> in that paper while I'm dropping down. A pattern also with a weight at the bottom, you can actually drop down faster. Put the lid on, keep it in the cooler. And we're back in action. Got a bit quiet on the bottom, but still, I've got one, two, three, four, I've had five bites and two conga. So let's see if they're interested in the worm. Fish on, fish on, only small. That's on that rag where I'm going to put it down. It's not black bream, I don't think. Or maybe it is, it'd be nice if it was. I think it's more likely to be pouting, who do like tiny pieces of ragworm. Could be a small wrasse, it's very, very small, but it'd be nice just to see what is nibbling away down there. Here it comes. Looks like a bream. Oh wow, it's a nice bream, guys. It's a nice black bream. Now, they're not touching the squid. That is just, well, how can that be right? And how can it be right? It's got hold of Frank too. Another mess with braid. There we go. There is, I'm gonna get spiked, I dare say. Stop it, stop that. Stop it, stop it. There is the worm. There's the hook out. Fish is gone. So that was well worth freezing those worms. It didn't do me any good on the beach, but it's bizarre, isn't it? Now you have to think, I've lost my leads as well. You have to think how on earth does a, does, a, does, a, does a black bream living out on a reef come across a ragworm which lives inshore? I always find that strange. But I'm so happy to have caught like that on the worm. The trouble to freeze those down already getting a black bream like that is worthwhile. Oh, happy days. Let's see this big boy scream off. Well, every once in a while you've got to try something stupid. I'm going to be trying these. I was going to use them as, they're called sea sticks. They've been frozen, they might be converted to sea sick shortly. Um, I'm either going to chum them over the side, or if they're too soft, if they're too soft they're going over the side anyway. Failing that, I'm wondering if you could elasticate one. They've been cooked. Wow, they, they certainly... They certainly smell of seafood. I wonder what it'd be like elasticating one on a hook, whether I could possibly elasticate one on a hook. Actually, if these are cooked in the sun, so much my sandwiches be. My survival. Make sure you get the little pieces of paper off them. And I reckon you can mush these up like this. But they're relatively tough, actually, look. It's quite, so you can see it there, look. I reckon it's got worth a try, isn't it? You know, nothing else is happening. They've gone pretty stringy. In the water with them. Get, get, get off of me! My finger's gone. <laughs> all the dyes come out. <laughs> all the stuff we eat as humans is weird, isn't it? Well, I won't be eating those. They've been in and out of the freezer a few times. I think they might stay on the hook. They look, when I crumble, even when I wash my hands here, I reckon if they were fresh thawed out ones, not cooked in the sun, I think they would crumble up and be really good shore fishing, get garfish, mackerel and stuff like when you're off rocks, off headlands, off piers. That might be worth trying the old crab sticks. Crab sticks or sea sticks as they're called. Defrost, then eat, it says. Uh, they're very, very warm. I think I'm going to try them, people. I'm going to chill them first. Oh, I've got a fish on the uh, uptide rod. I guess it's trout. It's a very, very small tap. It smells like a small conga. Ooh. which gives me a good chance to uh, change over and try that crab stick thing, that seafood stick. And he's come off. Happy days. I can see him spinning back there under the water. 
is pretty well move my tea there chewed that piece of trout right back let's see if I can whip on one of these crab stick things well well I found the problem with the old crab sticks the seafood sticks as you bind them the, <laughs> the elasticated thing cuts right through them so that's just sort of hanging on there I'm going to lower it over the side and see uh, if we get any nibbles on it Looks like there's uh, bits and pieces coming off it as it goes, goes down. So by the time I reach the seabird, I think I've probably got nothing on the hook. Definitely looks like it's very good for chum, float fishing off the shore, off the rocks or piers. we give that one 10 minutes. Well, I have moved. I've come inshore and further west. I think I've missed the reef again. I'm getting no bites at all. I did see something swirl behind the bag. I don't know if it's a bass or what. It was right on the track where the chum slick was. And that's washing out now, the chum slick. So I'm figuring I might take that off and put a bottom bait on it once that chum's gone. It's, I'm not a great one for moving but I'm going to make myself move today and keep watching the clock. It's 1.30 now. I've only got to be in by about 5, 5.15. I was late starting, I lost half an hour this morning. And that was a half an hour when the fish were biting as soon as I got there. This tide's going to start dying in a minute. What I have found before, if I'm on the outside and the tide dies, I can get a little bit more tide on the inside by coming shallower. I've got a good tide here, but I think five minute warning guys, I think we're going to move back out again. You can see I'm really close to the uh, to the shoreline now. Fabulous beach in there. And I still yet to come down here and go fishing inshore for bass and experimental and stuff like that. It's got to be done. It's got to be done, but I can't get away from things like congas. Right, another move. Well, I do love these old boats, except for the, uh, the ventilation aspect. I slightly wonder what this is for. <laughs> I've seen a couple around. Obviously, it's just the knots that ping out. Another one up there. So a little bit of ventilation, keep things cool. Well, the breeze has sort of died off almost totally. 
I'm not getting a single bite. But what you can try on these boats, in this bucket, other than my two flasks and a bit of rubbish, they give these old school hand lines, which you can put a set of feathers on and drop down. <laughs> Why well, say set of feathers? Okay, one feather. You can put some feathers on and drop them down and see if you can pick mackerel up. I might even do that. My wrist is killing me. Good job I had those thick gloves. I've got hung in the bottom on 50 pound braid. I couldn't break it out. So I've had to walk backwards and forwards here, cleating it off there, get my gloves tangled up, going back down, taking another bunch, put a piece of wood there, pulled it right up, cleated it off, and I've done that about five times. And I've got it up, and it was, I thought, a World War II bomb. Or I thought it would be something exciting, you know, a high explosive or something to, uh, something to get me a YouTube viral video. But no, it was a gargantuan piece of whatever this is. It weighs a ton. It just, it just seems too heavy, honestly, to be rock. I, 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 can I describe that? That just, it feels so like metal. Is it the fluke of an antique anchor? If you can see that, it's totally pitted. And that's the other thing. I'm thinking, would a rock pit like that? I don't know. There's nothing sort of on it. No wonder I, I snag up. Quite pretty bits and bobs there. I'll probably heave that back over the side, I think, in the aid of conservation. See, that side there's flat. I'm thinking that's metal. <laughs> I'm thinking it's a, a World War II Junkers 88 dive bombers bomb. And here I am going, now, is that metal or what is that? Bing, bing. Is that the fuse up there, Graham? That, what's that soft bit? Is that bits of shrapnel? Interesting. It just feels too heavy. If, you, if, if that makes sense. It just feels too he ow, just sharp as well. It just feels too heavy to be rock. What do you, what do you guys think there? Interesting, but a painful half hour. Or, being off the Jurassic coast, is the lower left hip bone of a previously unknown species of T-Rex that lived on the land and came out here fishing. I just hope it had better luck than I do. It's very quiet, it's dead tide. I've got a spinner I've been jigging here. One of the guys come out there for whatever reason, I don't know, mackerel I guess. One rod on the bottom, I see no point in feeding any more to the uh, Jurassic Coast. Tough one, tough one, very tough. But fabulous day on the water, look at it. Oh, I spin round. It is, is it not? Super spot. He's got plenty of people on there. I guess he's just drifting and feathering, I don't honestly know. It must be tough during the holiday season for a charter skipper who obviously wants punters to catch fish, but trying to avoid them all getting tangled and stuff like that, it must be a nightmare. But it's a living, so they get used to it, I guess. Wind's going southwest, which is exactly what Simon said it might do. Do I move again or do I wait until the tide swings? I was just going to move, I'm going to move, uh, and I've got something on those small hooks and the worms again, that frozen ragworm. So I'm really, really pleased with that frozen ragworm. I've used it for rats and stuff before. It's either really good bream, I'll try casting right to the back, you know, into the chum sleep more, 
nothing, so I just dropped straight over the back of the stern. I still think I'm on the back east edge of the reef and I've got a dogfish. So, third species, still a fish, isn't it, guys? You know, still a fish. It's on a semi barbless hook, so that's got to be good news. One dogfish. That's not very nice. One dogfish, another rig to tie up, and I think I'm going to move. Well, third move, guys. This is your third time lucky. You generally know when you're going to get small bites. That little rod there with those three bits of ragworm on, that would be my indication of being in a good spot. Oh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I think I am in a good spot. This sun just takes it out of you. I'm the only boat out here, there's nobody else I can see now. They've all gone home, and I don't understand it because the tide is still going the wrong way. <laughs> Something bizarre is happening. <clears throat> but as long as there's flow, you've got scent coming off of those baits. So I've got a mackerel head and guts, albeit frozen, not fresh. Frozen rainbow trout, frozen ragworm there, and a shark line. My shark chub is nearly out, but I've got to leave it in there just in case. I did see something swirl at the back of the boat. I don't know whether it was a seal or what it was. I don't think it was a shark, to be honest. It might have been a big bass come up to investigate the uh, last remnants of the chum slick. But it is idyllic out here. 50 year old wooden boat. I wish it was 50 years ago and I was a bit younger and there were more fish as there were 50 years ago. But this is the way it is. As I've said in previous films, these old boats aren't going to be going forever. And once they're stopped, they won't be and can't be replaced. The history can't be replaced. So that's why I like going on them, more for a sense of duty to the fishermen that came in these boats in years gone by. It's a long drive down here in Devon, for me anyway. I mean, it's dead handy if you live in somewhere like Cornwall. You, if you're in Cornwall, you're down in Falmouth Bay or somewhere like that, what a doddle. Fish all over the place. Just look out the window, see what the wind's doing, check the forecast, jump in a boat, go on the shore, drive around the other side of the lizard, pop down to Penzance, go north to St Ives, go out to Boss Castle for the Paul Beagle Sharks. Go further out of Boss Castle and Bew for the taupe. Go to Lundy Island back up that way. I think guys down here, do they realise how good the fishing is really down here? Clean, clean water as well. But then, when you think about it, look at the fish I've caught with Tomo up at Watch It on the uh, Somerset side, on the north side in the Bristol Channel. I still, all these years I go down there, I cannot get my head round how muddy filthy water is, it's dirty, dirty water. And the fish are, it's really good fishing up there. So consistent, it's ridiculous. Just a good seabed, just rich. I think a lot of it as well, they tell me, they because the tides are so strong up there, I hope you don't mind me waffling on like this, but as the tides are so strong up there in the Bristol Channel, they don't get a lot of commercial fishing. <clears throat> they don't get people, well you can't long line it, because long, your long lines would be away with the ferries, you can't net it because you get weed and rubbish on, on a, like a three knot tide or more. So is that the reason the Bristol Channel is so good? And it is good, there's no question. If somebody said, what well, is one of the most consistent places <clears throat> for fishing in the UK, possibly sure as well, it would be the Bristol Channel or Yawn Yawn, obviously, Devon and Cornwall, because they've got clear water, deep water close, you've got the water sharks down there. You just need the weather in Britain. Listen, you just hear the slapping of the boat on the hull. You don't even hear that, do you? <laughs> The slapping of the boat on the hull. This is the slapping of the hand on the face. <clears throat> Start again, Graham. The slapping or gentle lapping of the water on the wooden boat. Oh, the sun's hot. Look, not a bite. I don't get it. I don't get it. I started off getting fish. <whistles> Fell off a glyph. I have no idea why. Last 
drop guys, nothing on that other one, except the rock, the bomb, whatever it was. So I'm coming short, trying to pick a bit more tide up, and that is going to be it for the last hour. Shallower, I'm hoping the tide will pick up. Trouble is the wind is coming this way, southwest now, and it wants to go sort of west, so it's wind against tide, so it's a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. It's all over by the shouting, that's the saying. Not another boat in sight. It's very sharky out there. Oh, peace and solitude. Now, I wouldn't mind some small fish, if it can be organised. I'm out of chum, I've got no more chum left. It's done, the bag's just over there because it, uh, it hustles. You never know, something might come up. So folks, we're down to last knockings. As always, a very poor day's fishing, I have to say. Started with a bang and has gone steadily downhill. It's all down to time of year, tide and stuff like that. I'm gonna love that back there because I'm not gonna put that shark line out there now. I'm looking for one fish to salvage the last afternoon session. My wrist's still aching from hauling up that 60 pound lump of arsenal bomb, whatever it is, shell casing. Anyway, we are out, as they say, and that's the most important thing. Where's that small one? That's the one I fancy. I wish I could say there was some skill involved, but I was just sorting my rods out. <laughs> and I just moved one. I'm now on my fourth mark. And as I lifted up, thinking it was snagged, Frank too has loaded up with what I guess is another small conger. I've got barely an hour left. I've got no other lines. It's on trout meat. Wow, should I put them all on trout meat? They do love it. Here he comes. Not a big honger, but Frank too's held together. Just come on. I mean, years ago we used to buy a conger rod. I'm just using the broken. There we go. Of a carp rod. Happy days. Well, is it the tidal situation? I'm going to drop this mic because I'll probably end up unhooking the microphone instead of the fish. Let's see where he is. And he's gone. Let's get right in. Trout skin's looking a bit sad for itself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Big bite on this one, boys. Big old bite. I don't know if he's dropped it or not. I don't think that's a doggy. There he is, bang. This, that was a good, powerful bang. That could be a good head shake. Scanning the many rods. That one's okay. I've had nothing on that one, I don't think. I'm just gonna ease up on this guy. Where is he? Let go. He just came off. Oh, 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 oh. Frank Two's going. He's got the blues. 
It could be dogfish, but it could also be the state of tide. And it's now pulling. No, he's still going that one. <clears throat> he's chomping on it. Could be a doggy, could be a doggy. I really want to miss him. I think he would have pulled away. That one was really banging and pulling and I still missed it. Just gonna ease up on him. See if he pulls back. I think he might be there. No, he's gone again. Happy days. Good bites. Better than no bites, people, when the clock's ticking like this. Oh, that's the, that's the wee rod. I just put some more worm on there. Frank one is ominously quiet. All four feet of him, or three feet six. Could be all dogfish. Who knows? I think a couple were congas though. Way difference in the uh, bite ratio though, look. Hopefully not loads of dogfish. One nice big conga would finish the session off. That was on mackerel, that dogfish, which they do like mackerel. Just watch the bites there. Put the camera on, nothing happens. Let me get through a bait now. No problem getting through bait at the end of the day. That's a mackerel. Look at that, you couldn't refuse that. A mackerel and rotten trout combo. gonna heave it way back because it's a lightest ledge lead and I want it flowing away. Hello, customer on this one too. An inquiry. As you can tell it's uh, pushing this way, the southwesterly waves coming in. And that it could be that, it could be just a change in wind direction, but I think it's a tidal flow that's doing it. Get me a few extra last minute bites. Oh, I hear a ticking, I hear a ticking. Yes, a customer. Oh man, that's not a dogfish. That is not a doggy. That's a 30 pound class, 2030. This rod is a 30, 20, 30 pound class. This is a good conga on here. You know, double figure, I'd say. Yes, sir. Let's finish with a nice fish. Finish with a nice fish. In a setting like that, he's kicking and twanging. And luckily, I think he's going to keep away from the others. That right hand line there. Well, I've got a. Oh, yeah, it's a nice conga. That's a nice conga boy. Oh, oh it's a spinner. Beaut, beaut. I don't want to smack around the kisser with the lead. Let's show the folks on YouTube. There we go. And that's what they do. They, they spin and then they whiplash. You might do it there. Go. That's called a conga spin. And then generally they do a whiplash as well. Like that, just there. Good fishing. Oh, my poor old wrist is going through it. All right, I elasticated that chunk of trout because there's no skin on that. So it's, oh, 
I saw that out the corner of my eye. I thought I saw that one bang. No. Doesn't look like a bite. Sometimes you see bites right out the corner of your eye when you're not even looking at the rod. The longer you fish, the more you get used to it. Yeah, this one I've elasticated because there's no skin. The skin is the toughest part of the trout. So there's still plenty of meat on there. But without that skin, trout meat is pretty soft. Especially if it's been cooking in the sun. I must check the time as well. Shame I've got more fresh trout. The trout is definitely out fishing the mackerel, no question. All you trout fishermen that don't like eating trout and don't know what to do with them, I suggest you contact a sea fisherman because <laughs> it's great shark jump and it's very good uh, for congers, bull huffs and stuff like that. 15 minute warning people. One conger to finish off. Nothing on the small hooks and around me an entire ocean on my own. Well, I'd love to stay out here for the evening. It's gone quiet now, it's just gone off a little bit. So it was the start of that. <sighs> that Frank's just having a bit of a bit of a turn there. Look, that's Frank, that's Frank. He's having a bit of a turn. Hang on a minute, let's give him some line. I was just about to say the fish have gone off the bite. It was at the start of the uh, turn of the tide. And I have dropped quite a few fish today. I probably hooked, I don't know what, 10 conger got for five. Had another small one. Dropped a couple. Yeah, it's dropped it as well, or it's a dogfish, one or the other. Gen generally, dogfish will come back. Like that. Just bumping that made him grab it. I think he's trying to get it down like this, as those sharp jabs. I don't think that was a dogfish there. There, that bit. Now this is the last shout, so I'm getting ready to wind in. He's dropped that. Oh, this one hasn't dropped it. This is on the worm, on the frozen ragworm. I'm calling it dogfish on a tiny hook, so I've got to take my time. It's not ch chuntering around enough and shaking, head shaking to be a bream. A stranger that I've had two or three pulls on that and they just won't load up on it. The one bait I thought would go would be the skinless trout there that was whipped on because that's all juicy meat. I think this is almost sure to be a dogfish and that might be the last one of the day. And indeed, I called that one right. Quite a big dogfish actually. Oh, ping, off he goes. All right, so you can see, as I was saying before, I got rudely interrupted by that uh, conger take and that dogfish that is packing up time. It's a, it's a change in the tide, I think, and the wind as well. Um, there's a big twang over there. So <laughs> I've got to back up. I have five o'clock is packing up time and it's like five to five and it's going to take longer than five minutes to pull all these lines in and then I have to pull the anchor up, start the engine and drive in in about ten minutes. It's not going to happen, is it? 
and I'm hanging out as long as I can. So guys, hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed a nice sunny day, caught a few fish, got to pull on them. Disappointed with not uh, more black bream and smaller fish around. Uh, mackerel or small bass or something would have been interesting. Uh, spice it up, but that's the way it is with fishing. Conga fishing's held up yet again. No question that the rainbow trout came out as the top bait. And we'll see you in the next show. Thanks for watching this one. Hit the subscribe button. If you want to, great. If you don't, no problem. We'll see you guys next time. Boat, sea, beach, river, lake. Could be anywhere with me.